No, I did. I'm getting rave reviews for what I did for Roger Stone, and he, frankly, really? is going to go and now appeal his case. Uh, uh-huh. Rave reviews. Huh. I'm guessing that a uh, former uh, prosecutor, Barb McQuaid, is not one of the rave reviews. <laughs> Good morning, Barb McQuaid. How are you? Good morning, Stephanie. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Rave reviews. Apparently, you did not give him a good Yelp review on his Roger Stone. <laughs> Pardon brought his average down. <laughs> well, it depends on the definition of rave. I am. I mean, I'm ranting and raving, but uh, I'm not sure that's what he had in mind. I, Barb, I don't. I, I, I do you scream at your television <laughs> as much as we do? Like on, a, on occasion. Because you're such a steely prosecutor. <laughs> you're such a calm person. And wait, can, did you hear this, Kate? I hate to match your legal mind against Kaylee McInerney, but hang on, listen. Uh, the Roger Stone clemency um, was a very important moment for justice in this country. Your thoughts, Barb? <laughs> uh, she, she missed one, one syllable. Uh, she should have inserted the word in before she said justice. Mm-hmm. And I would agree with everything she said. Yeah, I, uh, wow. I Well, listen, I have to say, I had uh, Chairman Schiff on yesterday and pestering him as I do and this morning we uh, news the what the house intends to quickly revive its legal effort to access President Trump's financial records and tonight it's asking the Supreme Court's help to speed things up um so I'm going to take total credit for that but but uh I I mean the injustices that are piling up every the corruption every single day it, it just isn't it hard for even you to get your mind around it legally it, it is but I think that we um what we can't do is to become inured to it and lose our sense of outrage, because it is outrageous. I think it's easy to sort of, after a while, shrug your shoulders and say, there goes Trump being Trump again. Um, But it is an outrageous injustice. Uh, Commuting the sentence of Roger Stone is not just a politically motivated use of the clemency power uh, that, that should maybe rankle political opponents. What's so different about this one is that the purpose of this, as the judge herself said, Roger Stone was not standing up for the president. Roger Stone was covering up for the president. And by granting clemency, President Trump has rewarded Roger Stone for being silent and not telling what he knows about Trump's involvement in the Russia attack on our election. Barb, you wrote a great piece here uh, in the Daily Beast. That is exactly what you said, the the key difference. You said Trump's action is not just a distasteful use of pardon power. It's maximum corruption because it is designed to benefit himself. I mean, I don't know how it gets clearer than Roger Stone, and you quote him, Barb, saying, he knows I was under enormous pressure to turn on him. It would have eased my situation considerably, but I didn't. It doesn't take a prosecutor like you to go, oh, that means you have something to turn on him about. Right? <laughs> right? I mean, you don't use well, that. And, yeah, go ahead. And just look at the c- contrast in the way he has treated other people in his orbit. Um, Paul Manafort got lots of praise uh, on Twitter Michael Flynn got lots of praise on Twitter. Um, Michael Cohen did not. Michael Cohen uh, is someone who did talk, and we saw what happened to him. He did get prosecuted. He went to prison. He's back in prison, apparently because he refused to give up his rights to write a book about what he knows. And so President Trump has sent the message through his conduct that he takes care of people who uh, cooperate and protect him as opposed to doing their uh responsible thing, which is telling the truth um, and helping uh, prosecutors uncover crime. I heard you talking about that last night, that once again, this is something you've never heard of legally, that Michael Cohen is back in prison <laughs> because he wouldn't sign a thing saying he won't. I Again, Barb, I is that legal? <laughs> I don't understand. No. The rest of us don't understand. How... I don't understand how, because obviously now we're all concerned. You look at Epstein, you're like, oh, okay, is he safe in prison? Is he going to get coronavirus? But also, he had to sign something I've never heard of before, you've never heard of before, saying he he won't write a book in order to get out of prison. So it it seems very unusual. Um, Now, I I think I'd love to see a little more reporting on this, but the New York Times says that they saw the document that Michael Cohen was asked to sign as a condition of staying on home confinement, he was released because of COVID. He was asked to comply with some conditions. Now, he was caught eating out at a French restaurant. I don't know if he had permission to do that, and maybe that was part of the reason he was returned to prison. But the provision in this agreement he was asked to sign and refused to sign said he agreed uh, not to give any media interviews or write any books uh, while he's on home confinement as a condition of staying out of prison, and he refused to agree with that. 
I, I think that is not legal. Um, there are, uh, it, at one time, you know, following the Son of Sam murders, uh, laws passed to prevent people from profiting from their crimes. They were known as Son of Sam laws that people couldn't uh, profit. But the remedy for that typically is that courts will uh, forfeit the proceeds and award the proceeds to a victim. But what they cannot do is stop a person from writing their book. The First Amendment protects people's ability to tell their story. And so uh, I think that if Michael Cohen were to challenge that provision, I think he would prevail. But uh, it's so unusual. He's the only person I've ever heard of getting this condition. Yeah. Um, it makes me wonder whether it is in an effort to keep him quiet until after the election. Thank you. Yeah, and Lanny Davis, by the way, said it was not the restaurant thing at all. It was this, they were negotiating over this thing, and the, the you know, marshals came with hand cops and said, oh, sorry, this is above us. It's above us, it's our, you know, out of our hands, and and took him off to prison. Um, it, Barb, you go into in the, law, in the um, Daily Beast piece, of course there's always a darker... <laughs> thing happening legally and otherwise you said in commuting stone sentence trump is not just rewarding a loyal friend he's protecting himself rather than pardoning stone and this is important he ordered trump ordered a commutation which means stone's conviction remains on his record but he does not have to serve a day in prison one reason to use a commutation instead of a pardon you say is to preserve the illusion of trump's or stone's innocence uh, commutation perpetuates the rich, witch hunt narrative of trump's revisionist history which we just heard um you said it preserves stone's fifth amendment right against self-incrimination this factor makes commutation more attractive for trump so that means stone gets relieved from prison but can still invoke his fifth amendment right against self-incrimination to avoid testifying about the president so what does that mean barb because i know that you know your friend glenn kirshner and others have said we have got to go forward in november hopefully when there's a biden president you cannot let this go so is does that mean he cannot be prosecuted or he doesn't have to testify what does that mean yeah, this is one of those heads I win, tails you lose. Uh, you know, there, there's so much uh, legal talent in the White House Counsel's Office, and uh, if, if only they would use their powers for good instead of evil. But I can imagine them sitting around thinking about what's the best way to prevent um, people from getting the truth out of Roger Stone, and one of them is, well, if we just commute a sentence, he never has to go to prison, but um, he still has his Fifth Amendment right because he is pending a motion for new trial and his appeal. And so as long as those things are still out there and active, he can assert his Fifth Amendment right to say, I can't answer that on the basis that it might incriminate me. Um, now, there is still the ability to grant him immunity, uh, which would override that, but that means he would give up any ability to then convict Roger Stone. Maybe that's worth it. Maybe that uh, uh, giving up that opportunity is enough in exchange for anything he might know about President Trump. But I think someone was thinking through uh, all the moves in the chess match when they decided that commutation was a, a better way to protect President Trump uh, from uh, disclosure than a, a full pardon would have been. I know you've devoted your life to it, Barb, but the law, in my opinion, is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid well, and it doesn't I work. Stephanie, I, I agree with you. One of the things that Trump has done here has exposed some of the gaps in the law, mm. places where um, – We've always had these norms where we sort of expect people to act with some shame and humility and right. political accountability. Um, and he has exploited a lot of these gaps in the law. Um, and I think it calls for some revisions. I think the other thing he has exposed is the way the justice system moves so slowly and that he can stall uh, and run out the clock uh, in ways that uh, in order to his benefit. And so I think uh, one of the things that needs to be explored in the future is how to move these things along a little more quickly. I mean, he... Yeah. He really dragged things out in the impeachment proceeding, uh, dragged out these subpoenas. The Supreme Court ultimately ruled last week that he has to turn over these financial records. But in the meantime, he has stalled so much that he's probably going to prevent those from being disclosed before the election. Yeah. And as you said on Twitter, Barb, I mean, it, it goes to the whole party, just the checks and balances we thought protected us. You said Republican senators are silent in front in the face of Trump's clemency for Stone, who lied to them under oath and obstructed their investigation into Russia's attack on our election. The complicity and treachery are breathtaking. Um, you, you talked about Mueller. You said, bring it on. Mueller refer, uh, prefers to let his indictments and reports speak for themselves, but he's not going to sit by in silence as Barr and Trump undo his work and attempt to rewrite history. Um, and I loved what you said for a stoic former Marine like Mueller. He's practically screaming in this op-ed, the injustice is just too much. And then we learned this morning that he considered condemning the DOJ over reversing the Mike Flynn uh, thing, uh, case, right, but decided to hold his tongue. And now this was too much. 
right? The dam broke with with Roger Stone. Yeah, I you know I think what people saw last summer when he testified, and it was probably just very frustrating for many people to watch, but probably not surprising for those of us who've watched him and, and know how he operates. He answered just the question asked, you know, yes, no, not a lot of elaboration. Uh, get in, get out, and, and do your job. But I think for him to write this op-ed suggests just how outraged he is. You know, he uses restrained language, but the mere fact that he's writing and uh, objecting to this, um, you know, says to me that he too is, is outraged. And I think one of the things he's trying to do is prevent President Trump from rewriting history. That press release that was issued along with the Roger Stone commutation talked about, you know, the Russia hoax. Uh, this was all ginned up and. I think at least one of the things that Robert Mueller wanted to say was, no, this was a legitimate investigation. Russia absolutely interfered with our election, and these people committed crimes along the way. These are not you know, so-called mere process crimes. Process crimes go to the very heart of the quest for the truth, and it allows investigators to figure out what happened so that we can better protect our country the next time going forward. So these were serious crimes. I'm glad he spoke up uh, because I think that might help blunt some of this effort to rewrite history. Well, and if they call him, now he can talk about the Stone case, right? He couldn't before because it was ongoing. Yes, and in fact, much of the um, material in his report relating to Roger Stone had been redacted. And so it was not known to the public, and it wasn't discussed when he testified a year ago. But um, those redactions have now been lifted following the conviction of Roger Stone. And one of the things that seems very clear, and I would love to hear more from Robert Mueller about this, is that it's quite possible that Donald Trump lied to Robert Mueller in his written answers when Thank he was you. asked about uh, what um, he discussed with Roger Stone relating to WikiLeaks. That uh, pre- material was all previously redacted, but in the report, Robert Mueller says that, that it appears quite possible that uh, pr- President Trump lied to us uh, because we know from the Stone case yeah. uh, that they were talking about the release of the emails through WikiLeaks and trying to coordinate messaging accordingly. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to um, Mueller prosecutor. Is it Andrew Weissman's book? Where he, but he yes. says like we could have done more. I mean, I think we all have. We understand what happened. But we all have questions. Why didn't he force him to testify? Why did he let him give written answers? Why, you know, there's so many that you know. Now you look in retrospect. I mean, I know we couldn't have seen what Barr was going to do. I mean, you you went back to our friend Harry Littman on Twitter. You said from Barr's confirmation hearing, do you believe a president could lawfully issue a pardon in exchange for the recipient's promise not to incriminate him? Barr, no, that would be a crime. As you said, that may be the first thing Barr has said with which I agree. Yeah, and, um, you know, I think we probably need a a, a little more evidence to put it together, but I think you could at least make a circumstantial case right now that that's exactly what happened, that in, in exchange for his silence, uh, the, the silence of Roger Stone, uh, Donald Trump issued a, a, a commutation. Now, not a pardon, which was the word that Barr used, but they're, they're essentially the same thing. It's clemency. It's a benefit. It is a quid pro quo. In exchange for your protection of me through your silence, I will commit perform this official act of my office, clemency, uh, f- for you. That is uh, a crime of bribery, and uh, I think that there is a possibility of Prosecution, you know, I think in the next administration they're going to have to think about do we want to continue to fight these battles that happened in the past or do we want to look forward? Uh, but if these crimes are egregious enough, and I personally submit that they are, yes, I think you could charge Donald Trump with a conspiracy to obstruct justice. You could include all of those yeah. things that Robert Mueller found in his report about asking McGahn to lie, about firing Robert Mueller and all of those things. And I think you could include as – I hope it's the final act, but at least an additional act of that conspiracy, rewarding Roger Stone for uh, failing, yeah. for, for, for concealing the truth. And I think you could put together a, a, a very strong case of obstruction of justice against Donald Trump and his criminal associates. I agree, Barb. I'm with you and Glenn Kirshner and many others. I We, we must. I mean, we must. This is only the rule of law in America. I mean, first of all, you read the Vanity Fair piece. Bob, Bill Barr is running a, a you know, October Surprise Factory, trying to, you know, investigate the investigators and drop some John Durham bombshell in October. I mean, and try to, like, overturn the whole Mueller thing, right? I mean, that's obvious. That is a political vindictive. What we would be doing under President Biden would not be vindictive. It would be about upholding the rule of law and precedent for ever, for every president, right? Yes. And I think, you know, sometimes people say, oh, why go back and dredge up all that stuff in the past? And I also say it's not so much to, to look back 
um, but it's to hold accountable for deterrence for the future. If you let people get yes. away with those things, they'll continue to commit them. But if people realize there is a very serious consequence to be paid for so brazenly violating the law, I think that encourages people going forward to comply with the law. Yeah, we can't just, as George W. Bush said on Inauguration Day, just say, well, that was some weird and then move on. <laughs> Barb, because I have no life, and that went for before the quarantine, I listen to everything you say, and I often write it down. I think you said Friday night that you, we should impeach again. Did you mean the president? Did you mean Barr? Because I, I think you were mentioning because he could run again in 2024. What did you mean by that? Yeah, so um, impeaching President Trump. So I, I wouldn't mind throwing in Barr for good measure. That's a good idea. Um, <laughs> I think that there is probably... Um, some exhaustion and fatigue of impeachment at this stage. There's an election in November, and I could see Democrats saying, well, um, we should focus all of our efforts on voting him out of office, and then he's gone, and it's all over, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. But um, just as Grover Cleveland did, uh, Donald Trump could run for president again in 2024. Oh. Oh, the Constitution uh, limits a president to two terms, but it doesn't say they have to be consecutive oh. terms. But one of the things that impeachment allows is not just removal from office. I think that's what we typically think about it as. But it also includes the provision that the remedy for impeachment can also be impeachment and conviction. Um, is not just removal from office, but disqualification from holding office in the future. Yeah. And so there may be value. And after November, if the president loses, those Republican senators might finally find themselves on the right side of justice uh, and not feel so fearful of President Trump, might actually vote uh, the way the evidence shows this time around. Yeah. And uh, Donald Trump could be prevented from being president again in 2024. That'd be a nice yeah. uh, farewell gift to the country. Thank you. They might actually vote for America this yeah. time. Um, Barb, thank you so much. I, I, I honestly, you're, this is, I look forward to this like a, the biggest nerd in, in uh, the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anytime, I, Stephanie. It's great to chat with you. You too. Thank you, Barb. Talk soon.